Hello everybody, this is Dr. Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue looking at plate tectonics. So this video is going to focus on the use of paleomagnetism to look at the direction and rate in which crustal spreading is taking place, so the rate at which new crust is being made at divergent plate boundaries. So this is going to correspond to section 3.9 in your textbook. So we're going to begin by thinking about the Earth's magnetic field. Now, we know that the Earth's outer core is made of liquid nickel iron alloy. Now, we know this nickel iron alloy is going to be quite hot, and so we know it's going to be naturally convecting. So if you remember, warm material will rise, it will cool, and then it will sink. And this is a non-stop process. Warm, warm material is constantly going up, and it's being replaced by cooler material, which is coming down. Now, this process results in the formation of a magnetic field because this convection creates electric currents in the outer core. And this leads to a magnetic field being generated. Now, we are used to what we refer to as the normal magnetic field. So that's where the polarity that essentially ends up with north being north and south being south. However, at some points in Earth's history, the magnetic field has actually reversed. And these reversed magnetic fields, essentially the polarity has changed. So now north is south and south is north. So rather confusing, I know. But we can actually use these flips to help us look at the creation of new crust at divergent plate boundaries. So the question is, is, well, why? How can we do this? Well, we can use the minerals in rocks, or should I say some minerals in rocks, to essentially look at the Earth's magnetic field when that mineral was forming. Now, it just so happens that certain minerals, particularly iron oxide minerals, are very, very good at retaining a signature of the Earth's magnetic field when they formed. And so this means that we can take those rocks, we can measure the signature, essentially, in those minerals, and we can work out, right, when this rock was forming, was the Earth's magnetic field normal, or was it reversed? And this is the study of paleomagnetism, so ancient magnetism in rocks. And it's very, very helpful because it allows us to essentially see that seafloor spreading is taking place at divergent plate boundaries. And it also allows us to come up with a solid figure to show us how fast or slow seafloor spreading has been occurring over time. So here we go, this is our basic situation. So here we have our divergent plate boundary and this dashed line here represents the rift. So essentially this, this spreading center. Now at the moment we can see we have new oceanic crust being made and this new oceanic crust is being made when the magnetic polarity is normal. So north is north, south is south. And so this means the iron oxide minerals within this oceanic crust here are going to retain that normal magnetic signature. Now, over time, what's going to happen? Well, we're going to end up creating uh, more oceanic crust, but as you can see by this point, there's been a reversal in the poles. So now north is south and south is north. And once again, that signature is now going to be uh, retained in the iron oxide minerals which are forming right you know, during this time period. You'll notice, by the way, that our original uh, rock here, which we were talking about in stage one, has been split in two, with one half going this way and one half going that way. Because, of course, as you know, on the ridge here, as new rock is created, it essentially pushes the older crust laterally away from the ridge. So over time, what we can see here is we can see we have reversal, normal, reversal, normal, reversal, normal. So we can see at the moment here, we have a period of normal magnetic polarity. Then before that, there was a period of reversed magnetic polarity. Then before that, there was another period of normal magnetic polarity, then a reversal, normal magnetic polarity, and a reversal. And you'll notice that essentially each side of the spreading ridge is a mirror image of the other when it comes to the magnetic polarity. And so this is a really good piece of evidence to show that divergent plate boundaries are where new or where new oceanic crust is being made. 
because we can see old oceanic crust is formed at the ridge and then steadily over time it gets pushed away from the ridge as new crust is produced. The other thing is, is we can then go out in a ship and we can drill down into this seafloor and we can actually date the rocks. And so we can get a, a date for this layer here, this layer here, that one, that one, and this one. And we can say, right, how long has it taken to get from here? Well, how, well, sorry, how long did it take to get from here to here? And so using that, we can calculate our rate of spreading, can't we? So, you know, if we know how, how many centimeters in terms of distance it is to, from there to there, and we know how many millions of years it took, well, distance over time is rate. So we can quite quickly calculate what the rate of spreading is, can't we? So this is how we can actually work out how, what the rate of spreading has been in the past. So as you can see in model one, of course, we had our normal polarity, then we had a reversal, and then we can see we have a series of normal polarities and reversals building up over time. And if you actually look at magnetic data for the seafloor, like the North Atlantic or the South Atlantic, you will actually see that the data has a very distinctive striped appearance. So and that's a reflection of the uh, reversals in the Earth's magnetic field. So here we go. So this uh, actually shows you a diagram, which is showing you what the data looks like when we actually collect it. So here is some data showing you the uh, magnetism essentially of the rock or more accurately the Earth's magnetic field. So what we can see here is here's our uh, baseline. And if the data falls below the baseline, we have ourselves a reversal. If the data falls above the baseline, we have a, essentially a normal magnetic polarity. Now we can see this is our spreading ridge here. So this is where new crust is being made. So if we look up, so our spreading ridge is going to fall about there. Okay. And so what can we see? Well, we can see either side of our ridge. Here's our magnetic, which is uh, magnetism, which is normal. So that represents this area here. Then we have essentially a reversal there and a reversal there. That's that band there and that band there. Then we have a return to normal magnetic polarity there and there, a reversal again, return to normal, reversal, return to normal, reversal, return to normal. And so this is what the data looks like. And we can then, you know, essentially map that onto a surface, onto a map, and it ends up looking like this. And then once again, we can then use this data to work out the rate at which seafloor spreading is taking place. So once again, if we can measure the age of rock number four, so we get a date in millions of years, and we know the distance from here to number four in centimeters, then we can calculate what the rate is because we know the distance, we know how many millions of years it took to get there. And so it's simply, once again, distance over time gives us the rate. So magnetic strips are very, very useful because they show us that, uh, uh, that new crust is being made at these divergent plate boundaries, but it also shows us the speed at which new crust has been made in the past. And one of the things that we've noticed when we look at the data from these spreading ridges is that they do not create crust at a stable rate. Sometimes they go faster, sometimes they go more slowly. And so we need to bear this in mind when we're thinking about Earth history. Sometimes we will see periods of Earth history where divergent and convergent plate boundaries seem to be going absolutely you know, wild and they're creating crust at huge rates and they're destroying crust at huge rates. And then in some periods of Earth history, uh, divergent and convergent boundaries have been a lot quieter. And so always bear that in mind. That's a good uh, essentially uh, indication that most data in geologic history is not linear. Instead, it tends to fall on a more randomized pattern. So we don't have a nice consistent, uh, consistent rate at which new crust is being made. It will constantly change over time. Okay, thank you for watching everybody and have a good day.